what is happening you pickled pidgey coming at you with an obsidian flames set review i know i just talked about ruler of the black flame but now we finally have the full set list that we're going to be getting with the obsidian flames and it is coming out in just about a week and a half that does come out on august 11th so it should be available on august 10th on ptcg live before we jump right into it just wanted to let you all know that if you're looking for a way to support me and all the content i make here on the youtube channel i do have memberships enabled and you can check them out by clicking on the join button below the video uh, where for 99 cents you get access to a membership badge and a bunch of dope emotes so be sure to check that out if you're looking for a way to support me and everything i do here and let's go ahead and let's jump right into it so it's not a whole ton coming out of obsidian flames i'm not gonna lie that's pretty weak set overall now that we've gotten the full set list and i'm kind of taking a look at everything not great it's not gonna be a big shakeup. i think 151 will have a bigger impact on the format and thankfully the 151 set is not too far away that does come out in september i don't remember the exact date for that but we're only about a month there's about a month in between the release of obsidian flames and the 151 set so we're not too far from some potentially potentially some more impactful cards um the big one of course from the set is going to be charged up there's a couple other ones to take a take a look at and talk about one of them is that Toad's Cruel EX. It's got that protective charm ability. Prevent all effects of attacks from your opponent's Pokemon done to all of your Pokemon that have energy attached. So we've seen something similar like this in the Espeon VMAX where people utilize that card to prevent uh, big attacks from stuff like the Sableye in the Lost Box deck or the V-Star power from the Giratina V-Star in the Lost Box Giratina deck. Um, but I also think this could potentially, instead of just being a tech card, could be its own deck. So it's got that Colony Rush attack for two grass energy and does 80 plus 40 for each of your bench Pokemon with a grass energy attached. So there's a couple ways you could set this up. Uh, and if we do have a full bench, each with a grass energy on it, we'll be looking at 280 damage, which knocks out all V-Star Pokemon, which is pretty solid. Really KOs most Pokemon in the format currently. Stuff like a Duraldon VMAX and Umbreon VMAX. Well, Umbreon VMAX is actually weak to grass, so that would work as well. We couldn't one-hit KO a clean Gardevoir EX, but if they attack with the Gardevoir EX, they'll probably have... You know 40 damage counters on it that we'd be able to work with and then get the KO with the colony rush but yeah there's a couple ways we could set this up um it seems like maybe the more popular way to potentially set this up which i don't like as much is the fortress ex of course that has the ability where it knocks itself out and you put five grass energy into play pretty aggressive but giving up two prize cards i'm not a big fan of what i'm a fan of is the cherum that we have that accelerates grass energy to non-rule box pokemon and yes toad's cruel does have a rule box but Toad's Cool does not. So we can accelerate Grass Energy onto our Toad's Cool with the Cherub and then evolve them to the Toad's Cool EX and then be hitting for 280 damage as soon as potentially turn two, which seems pretty good to be honest. 270 HP, not bad. Only giving up two prize cards if we do get KO'd. Definitely something worth investigating and trying out. I actually worked on a list for that deck the other day on the stream and i'll be bringing that to you here on the youtube channel uh, in the next couple of days it'll make its way up uh in a video here on the youtube channel so look out for that toad's cruel build will be coming at you soon we got the victini ex and by itself the victini ex is in a deck but i think it's a pretty powerful partner in the charizard deck and of course we'll be talking about charizard here in just a second 190 hp got the strafe attack for one fire 30 damage you may switch this one with one of your bench pokemon eh not great but the victory flame for fire fire colors 220 this pokemon can't attack during your next turn 220 damage has been a very powerful number to hit for quite a while because v pokemon have 220 hp usually or less so this would allow a nice turn two attack and where you can ko a v pokemon like an arceus v giratina v something like that if you go first get out of turn two candy charizard ex set up your victini one hit ko something like an arceus v that's a pretty solid turn two so i think this is a pretty solid inclusion as like a one of in the Charizard deck because Charizard itself actually can't do enough damage on turn two to knock out something like an Arceus. It only hits for 180 damage until your opponent actually starts drawing prize cards. So I think a one of Victini is a very solid inclusion in the Charizard deck. And I did work on a Charizard build as well that I'll be sharing you with here on the YouTube channel. Like I said, in the next couple days, worked on a couple Obsidian Flames list. Charizard is a, one of the builds that I'm going to be coming at you with in the uh, the coming week or so as well as that uh, Toad Scroll build. And you see I'm scrolling a lot here because, yeah, there really isn't much in here to talk about. Just a couple cards. The Tyranitar EX. Uh, I was hyping this one up a little bit. A couple times I've talked about it. 340 HP. It's a Terra Pokemon. It's got the Mountain Crumble for one Fighting Energy, 120. Discard the top two cards of your deck. Pretty efficient energy-wise to damage ratio. But the discarding of two cards of your own deck is not great, obviously. And then Toll Rampage for Fighting Fighting. 150 plus 100 more damage if you have a pokemon on your bench with damage counters 250 for two fighting that's not once again a pretty efficient attack it's a pretty efficient attack 
250 gonna be good for a little while going up against those v-star pokemon but v-star pokemon are kind of on the way out the more EXs that come out the more that are probably going to be decent or some of them will be decent meaning hitting for these 250 numbers that could become like 280 with a choice belt isn't going to be quite cutting it when the pokemon have 300 and like well 40 hp like this tyranitar so not going to quite cut it here and i just feel like there's nothing there's nothing really there's no real oomph that this card had that kind of like sets it above the other ex pokemon even looking at something like a meow scarada ex that ability is super powerful you're doing a decent amount of damage with the attack you look at something like the Charizard, the massive amount of energy acceleration you get from the ability same thing with guard ex the ability a ton of energy acceleration the titar just kind of does damage and that's about it so i don't think there's enough here for the titar to be honest i don't think it's going to quite be able to cut it like i said multiple times now with some of these cards once the stats get big enough it doesn't really matter how bad the card might seem 340 hp is a lot hitting for 250 damage 250 energy is a lot but i don't think it's gonna be quite enough but to be honest i would love to be proven wrong on that one because i would love it if the titar was actually a good card uh, i'll talk about the palm out here at ex here for a second as well 300 hp zap kick for 60 for one lightning and then for two lightning discard two lightning energy from this pokemon if you do this attack just 220 to one of your opponent's bench pokemon 220 slam for double lightning pretty efficient powerful snipe attack of course man if he's in the format but it's not in every deck and this would be a pretty cool way to kind of pick on your opponent's benched v pokemon although what would you combo this with really would be the question i don't know if you fit in some kind of flaffy build maybe you also like run maridon and raichu so it's like a palmot flaffy maridon raichu type deck because you still want some one hit ko potential most likely which raichu raichu could give you maridon of course is just good with lightning pokemon in general so i could see something like that kind of happening and kind of getting a palmot ex in there but i don't think it'd be a very powerful deck in the meta but i thought it'd be worth talking about um belly bolt with the ability the insulator ability i think this is a very good ability so this makes this card pretty good it really is just all about the ability though uh prevent all damage done to this pokemon by attacks of your opponent's lightning pokemon so let's just say in the future maridon is a very solid tier one deck 10 15 percent of the meta and let's say you're playing a deck that well can't quite keep up with maridon for one reason or another slap a 1-1 belly bolt in your deck and all of a sudden you auto win the maridon matchup as long as you can set it up before they boss ko it but that would be the goal, right? So yeah, something like this is always kind of a tech card to look out for, including potentially any deck could potentially play this, right? You can put this in literally anything to solve a bad lightning matchup, as long as the lightning deck is good enough to make it worth including a 1-1 belly bolt. But we could get to that point for sure. And we also have like the Fido or whatever that uh, dog Pokemon is called that does stop the fire Pokemon from attacking. Also, I think we have a Bronzong Informant as well. So we have two Pokemon that can't be attacked by fire Pokemon or prevent all damage done to them by the fire pokemon up next this is i think the best card in the set now there's no archetype that's going to be built around this card of course charizard is going to be the best new archetype from the set but just because it's not an archetype doesn't mean it can't be the best card in the set and that's the cleffa 30 hp free retreat cost free attack cost that's the important part here it's pretty easy now to retreat turn one into this cleffa and utilize its attack grasping draw draw cards until you have seven cards in your hand that could be a lot of potential value uh, especially when it's like if you have like a two card hand it'll be like well if my opponent ionos me that'd be pretty good then i get six new cards but if they don't i can just drop to seven now and either i'm gonna have seven cards starting my next turn or six cards starting my next turn no matter what i'm gonna have more cards than like one or two cards that i played myself down into so yeah cleffa i think is gonna become a super powerful card moving forward um and will probably be a decent staple in quite a few decks it really depends like if your deck can't consistently retreat to the bench turn one and give up that energy then you probably wouldn't play something like this but decks like the charizard deck or like some of the other decks that i've been working on obsidian flames um they don't really need to attach turn one to something obviously if you're playing like an arceus deck or something like that not going to really be wanting to not attach your arceus v turn one if you're playing a lost box deck you want to play this as well might be able to find its home in some of the stage two decks moving forward it might not be great off release to be honest but i think as we go to a more heavy ex stage two format i think cleffa will shine for sure because the potential card value you can get off it on the first turn and so easily acquire it because you know you don't have to, as long as you're playing a deck where you don't have to attach to your a certain pokemon and play to build it up for the next turn you can just retreat that pokemon into the cleffa get a bunch of card draw potentially going into your next turn so yeah cleffa in my opinion is the best card in this set um of course like i said no archetypes are being built around it but i don't think you need that to be the best card in the set Charizard, of course, I think is going to be the best new archetype coming out of this. But another one that I think is going to be potentially solid and at least going to be a ton of fun is the Vespa Queen EX. Terra Pokemon, stage 1, 270 HP. The first attack is basically irrelevant. Recovering 
pheromones for our grass heal 60 damage from one of your pokemon i don't think we're using that very often to be honest but then for grass 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 phantom queen 200 damage put three damage counters on each of your opponent's bench pokemon that has any damage counters on it so the return of spread is possible here with the vespa queen not quite a full spread deck but kind of a hit decently hard with 200 spread some damage and then try and get some spread cleanup KOs from there. Anyways, I'm super excited for this card to try it out. Once again, this is another card that combos really well with Cherum. Cherum, of course, can't put energy on rule box Pokemon, like I mentioned with the Toad Scroll, but we load up our Combees with some energy and then evolve to the Vespa Queen. And we could be turned to attack him for 200 damage. Combo that with a Halucha, maybe an Alakazam, spread some damage on the bench. And then we dealing that, those three damage counters show some of our bench, our opponent's bench Pokemon, move some more damage around next turn, maybe boss something else up. And then the thing we hit for 200 damage, now we could be cleaning that up and putting the three damage counters on that to clean that up on the next turn. Who knows? There's a lot of potential with this card, I think, um, to have a fun deck to work with, some kind of element of spread. Like I said, I'm a big fan of spread type deck. So I'm excited to try this out and give it a shot. I'm sure I'm gonna have a ton of, a ton of fun with it, even if it's not, you know, a new meta deck. It still looks like it's going to be a great time. Always been a big fan of spread type decks like that. And I'm excited to try it out. I'm just kind of excited to use Cherim, to be honest. The Cherim just seems super sick with the Toe Scroll and the Best Queen. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most by far. Um, and here we go. We're at the Charizard. 330 HP stage two. It's a Terra Pokemon. And of course, all the Terra Pokemon, I don't think I explained this earlier, so I'll explain it now. The Terra Pokemon all have the attribute Terra. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from both from both yours and your opponent's attacks. Uh, it's got the ability, the Infernal Control, when you play this card from your hand to evolve a Pokemon. During your turn, you may search your deck for up to three basic fire energy cards, attach them to your Pokemon any way you like, then shuffle your deck. Pretty insane energy acceleration, even if it is on a stage two. Once you get it out, you're cooking, right? That's the big thing with getting to stage two Pokemon. You want to have a big impact when that stage two Pokemon does come into play. We see that with Guardi EX. When you candy out the Guardi EX turn two or evolve into it from a Curly on turn three, immediately you're setting up big threats from attacks through its ability. The same thing can be accomplished with the Charizard EX. And uh, yeah, and then you have that Burning Darkness for 180 plus 30 more for each of your each prize card your opponent has taken for just two fire energy. So pretty efficient attack. And then yeah, as your opponent draws prize cards, once they've drawn like four prize cards, you're doing 300 damage. And you're basically want to KO in anything in the format. That is, once again, pretty powerful. So Charizard, I think, is really good. <laughs> I think Charizard's really good. Um, how much will it shine immediately? I'm not sure. I definitely think once we maybe get to a more Stage 2 EX stable meta, I think Charizard will really have its moment. I think maybe initially, uh, once the set drops, Charizard's not going to be quite as powerful. Uh, but I think it will have its moment as uh, we get to a more Stage 2 EX focus. Like This one's just really powerful. Like I said, Guardi's really powerful. Guardi's going to lose a lot of key pieces uh, in next rotation, though. So Guardi's not going to be a front runner for one of the top decks moving forward. But I definitely think that Charizard EX will most likely be one of those top decks moving forward once we get to more ex stage two centered meta and that's all the pokemon i believe that i was even going to talk about there's like i said there's not a whole ton not a whole bunch of movers and shakers uh in this set oh there's the rev room ex rev room ex um i'm still holding out for this one <laughs> i love the card a lot I can attach four tools to it through its ability getting its attack set up though is kind of going to be the big struggle i'm not sure what we're going to be able to do to make that happen consistently i think we might have to hold off until the 151 set releases because there's an item card coming out in 151 that says flip a coin attach an energy from your discard pile to one of your pokemon and i think that might be the key to getting rev room set up so might have to wait to 151 before we see some magic from the rev room uh, but once you do set up one it does definitely going to stick around for a turn or two with all the tools you can attach to it to make it uh, survive and the attack reduces the damage you take by 30 as well so i think the rev room is going to be surviving for a little while after you set it up but setting it up is kind of the issue right now we don't really have any way to get to that metal metal colorless energy cost on the rev room so that's what's missing right now for the rev room but like i said as soon as 151 drops i think we'll have the pieces we need especially because there's that tool card in 151 that reduces the damage your stage one pokemon take by 30 which combos really well with rev room because you could attach like two of those up to rev room and then we're surviving for a while so i think we're holding off on that we're holding out for that um so waiting on that but once we get that i think there is some potential for the revenue and i'm excited to try it out once we do finally get what is it? i think it's called like energy sticker or something um pidgeot ex this one of course is going to be one another one of those cards where i think it's gonna be a lot more played a lot more powerful once we do get to a more stage two ex focused type meta where a lot more decks are playing stage two ex is that have a spare rare candies to kind of potentially use 
on something like setting up a support Pokemon like the Pidgeot EX. The Quick Search, search your deck for any one card. Of course, in the Fierce Winds, two colors energy for 120, made his card, stadium card to play. So obviously the attack, nothing great. But then also a three or three cost. So once you set it up, it's not only a search your deck for any one card every single turn, but it also has, can act as a pivot for you as well. If we set it up, decide what you want to do for the turn after you draw for turn, maybe play a couple cards. And you have a little couple more options to work with once you see how your turn develops. So very powerful card eventually. I think initially it'll probably be good in the Charizard decks, and then it'll also probably be pretty good in Chi and Pao back Scalibur. Um, I think it'll be pretty powerful in there as well. You could go up to like four red candies in the back Scalibur deck. And then uh, instead of playing like the B-Barrel or the Arceus, have the Pidgeot that can search your deck for any one card throughout the game instead of just Starburst for two, any two cards on that one turn uh, or the B-Barrel drop to five. Maybe you'll have to just find that one of any card throughout a game would be better. And you maybe combo that with also including like the Mew with the Mysterious Tail. You can dig for an item and then you follow up whatever that item becomes by using Pidgeot to search your deck out for any one card. So I could see comboing or playing both of those in the deck to have that be your kind of uh, Iono protection slash extra resources per turn type combo. The Pidgeot and the Mew because it'd be a lot to try and play like the Pidgeot and the B-Barrel or Pidgeot and the Arceus. I don't think you're ever doing Pidgeot, Arceus and B-Barrel. That seems like way too much. But maybe any of the two could work. Maybe you could put the Pidgeot with the B-Barrel. Draw with B-Barrel first, use Pidgeot afterwards. That would be a pretty powerful resource gaining combo for sure. So that's for sure. That would be very powerful. Seems like a lot to maybe include and set up throughout the games because games can be pretty fast, but it is possible for the trainer cards. We got the Jita, of course, which I don't think is going to see any play initially. At least there's no deck that I can think of where I would ever want to include this off the rip. But to the end of your turn, you can no longer attack with any of your Pokemon, including the ones that are put into play on that turn. And then you search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon. Uh, your turn doesn't end, so you can still do other stuff after that, but you won't be able to close out your turn with an attack or anything like that. Like I said, this is a good card. It's an inter interesting card. It's a cool card. I think it'll have its moment eventually. Won't be a very popular card ever, I don't think, but one or two decks in a certain meta we might see this being played, and especially when we have a card like Luminion around that allows us to search for specific supporter cards that we need for specific situations. It's definitely one of those supporter cards you'd probably play it as like a one of, and you'd want to be trying to take advantage of it on your first turn when you do go second. Letter of Encouragement, uh, if one of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, you can search your deck for up to three basic energy cards. Uh, I said this before, Cool card, but I don't see a lot of use for it initially off the rip. Maybe included as a one of in Chi and Pao, so you can go like Chi and Pao plus Letter of Encouragement and just thin all the energy out of your deck in one turn. I could see that, but besides that, I don't know what you would play this in, to be honest. But in the future, there's always potential, so this is definitely one of those cards where I could definitely see it being played at some point in the future. The deck would have to be a really weird deck, but it could work. Uh, Ortega, this supporter card I am a super big fan of, and I'm definitely going to be looking forward to trying to make this work in some decks you can maybe even play this i was thinking you could play this in the rever room deck with some spirit masks spirit max spirit mask says when the pokemon this card is attached to you is attacked by one of your opponent's pokemon your opponent has to discard a card from their hand so you put a couple spirit masks on a rever room like maybe two of those two of the new tool card coming from the 151 your opponent has to discard two cards from their hand and then on your turn you play or take a look at your opponent's hand choose one card you find there and put it on the bottom of the your opponent's deck then they do draw a card but that card is probably not going to be as good as the card you just took away from them. So a little bit of hand control, hand disruption type combo there. Ortega with Spirit Masks and Reverum. I don't know. I'm kind of a big fan of the idea of that combo. Um, so that's definitely something I'm going to try. I don't think, like I said, I don't think the Reverum is going to work initially. But once we get that sticker, anything is possible. Maybe put some Ortegas in there as well. That could be pretty cool. Uh, Patrol Cap, just an anti-mill card here. Uh, as long as as long as the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot, cards in your deck can't be discarded by effects of your opponent's attacks, abilities, item cards, tool cards, or supporter cards. So, kind of just an anti-mill card. If mill decks ever become popular, put a patrol cap in there. The anti-loss box card, or at least that's what's going to be played as initially, and then it might have more uses in the future when loss box maybe becomes irrelevant. But there's other basic Pokemon. Poke League Headquarters, the attack cost of each basic Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponents, is colorless more. So, pretty good against Lost Box, actually. The more I've thought about this card comboed with Iono, disrupting the Lost Box player, I think this is actually a potential card where we could get to the point where we actually see some decks that have a really bad Lost Box matchup just playing four of these and four Ionos and just being like, okay, that's my Lost Box matchup. And I think that is probably good enough to give you an advantage against almost all, most if not all Lost Box decks. Like, that's a lot for Lost Box to deal with. Four Iono, four Pokemon League Headquarters, I think you're beating most, most lost boxes with that, to be honest. So this could 
be the lost box killer the more i've kind of given this thought i think that combo itself is going to be a majority of lost boxes but even as just like a one of in a guard for deck a lake i might lake game my own comboed with a pokemon league headquarters is also going to be pretty deadly uh against the lost box as well so even like that just guardy playing one of these is going to be a lot better for guardy to tackle that matchup and you know what, to be honest i am a hundred percent down to see lost box kind of uh <laughs> no longer be a relevant deck it feels a little bit oppressive at this point it definitely feels like uh it is kind of the deck that is holding the most decks back right now so if this makes a difference and puts lost box away for a while if not ever that's okay with me and i play that deck a lot uh poppy moves to energy from one of your pokemon to another of your pokemon does not seem great i don't think we're ever playing poppy uh, rhyme another draw three utility supporter give us the draw fours at this point please give us the draw fours uh stuff like avery and this would be so much more powerful even just with that one extra card draw draw the guard switch your opponent's active pokemon to the bench your opponent chooses the new pokemon like avery this will pop up now and then in certain decks for very situationally situations where it's kind of like a one of that's about it definitely not a bad card to see around but yeah nothing too special town store once each player's turn that player may search their deck for a pokemon tool card reveal it and put it in their hand then that player shuffles their deck gonna be great in the rev room deck if you're playing a deck with a lot of different tool cards it could definitely be good as one of in there as well can search out stuff like forest seal stone sky seal stone um so maybe you could see this in a guard for deck that's trying to include both or probably pretty powerful in mew to be honest mew plays choice belt cleansing gloves for seal stone and it would be a counter stadium for pats of the peak that sounds like a pretty good recipe for a good card in a deck so this in mew makes sense makes a ton of sense would not be surprised to see this starting to be included in mew and i think mew is still going to be pretty decent like this set doesn't bring anything huge to the format i think it just like kind of kills off Mew. i mean charizard is probably not a good matchup for mew <laughs> because that just one hit Mew. it is dark type Mew's wishing that the charizard was fire type but how good will charizard be i don't know and uh I think the main thing for Mew still is going to be how many people are going to be playing Spirit Tomb. Uh, Vengeful Punch tool card here. When the Pokemon this card is attached to, it is knocked out by damage from your uh, from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon. Put four damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Uh, it's just an interesting tool card. This will definitely be used in some decks at some point where it's just like um, I KO'd one of their Pokemon, they KO'd me back, and I feel like I'm always just a little damage short from return KOing them. Okay, what if I played a Vengeful Punch? Tool card okay that works that gets me the prize trade back in my favor and now i'm winning games that i wasn't winning before so definitely expect to see this be played in a deck or two for a very specific matchup in the future at some point but it won't be like one of those cards that every deck is gonna be playing four of all of a sudden at least i don't think it will be that'd be a little bit weird if every deck just had four vengeful punch and yeah i don't think that is gonna be happening and that's my thoughts on everything coming out of a city and flames nothing great yeah, to be honest, as far as new archetypes cut, as far as new archetypes go, besides Charizard, like I said, my card of the set is definitely the Cleffa. But what do you guys think? Did you guys miss anything important in the set? I know there's a lot of cards that I didn't talk about that a lot of people have brought up to me, but I really don't think any of the other cards besides the ones I talked about really have any potential. But what about a good meme deck? Do you think there's anything I didn't talk about that could make a really good meme deck or just a cool deck to play the Pokemon TCG around? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And what are you most excited for to try out from the set kind of in general? Is it just the Charizard? Is there really thing, anything else to be too excited about? Like I said, the Reverend would kind of have to wait for 151, I feel like, overall. And then even something like the, the Vesper Queen and the Toad Squad, I guess, are like what I'm most excited to try out myself. Of course, Charizard is going to be cool, and I'm going to try it out. But yeah, I think there's anything really major I missed. Let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll catch you all in the next video.